Dang, and you know, first and foremost, I'm gonna just go ahead and start off the video because right now I was telling Chantel earlier that Strand Theater, we're in a historical Strand Theater right now in Boston, Massachusetts. And I remember when I was like 10, 11, um, I'm Haitian descent first and foremost, y'all yeah, already know. Um, when Haitian comedians would come into town, this place would get packed up with literally everybody in the church. And me and my cousins, everybody would be literally right in that section, just right over there. You know what I'm saying? So this is a lot of history we're sitting in right now. Like this is very historical and perfect for Black History Month and then off Black History Month. Y'all already know, my name is Noble. We am the creator of Museum TV. We are Boston's premier vlog. And um, we're coming with a very, 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 very special ending to the month here. Um, if you were following the channel, make sure y'all leaving a like, comment, and subscribing to the channel, obviously. But you would know these two brothers right here from a video we put out a month ago. This is Jeff Two Times and DJ Dex. Um, and uh, definitely go check out that video if you haven't. It's, it's debunking the myths and lies about Boston's urban music hip hop scene. Um, we definitely go into detail. Um, but this video right here is a little bit of a different gear. Um, to my left um, is a very, very, very special person to all of us at this table. Um, she's a very, very, very special person to Black History Month as a whole, because she is actually the inventor of this board game right in front of me, Rhyme Antics. She is, her name is Chantel Calloway. Actually, I'm gonna let you do your thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but just so she's not too humble on camera, she is the very first Black board game inventor, you know what I'm saying? And obviously she is a lovely lady, you know what I'm saying? So it's definitely a huge accomplishment, but if you want to give yourself a, you know what I'm saying? Pick up the mic, so I'll pick up the mic. So hey I'm everybody, saying. what's up? Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, uh, five years ago, Noble introduced me to his followers and community as um, I was just launching this game through an Indiegogo campaign. So uh, we were like pre-revenue, just in like the, the prototype phase. I didn't have an official business yet, but now today, five years later, it's the first black owned game to be sold in Target talk and Walmart. Talk. And um, you know, I've made black history as you know, as a, a black inventor for the culture, for the community, for other black creators. Um, and I'm just uh, really happy to be here again, talking to Noble and being being able to be a success story, right? Yeah, Five years low later. Key, not okay. I always love this. <laughs> I actually got to say real quick, because in Boston, we're always talking about the sports, you know what I'm saying? We're the sports city, you know what I'm saying? City of champions. We love that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But end of the day, the biggest thing that seems to kind of tiptoe around the glory of the city is the entertainment realm. You know what I'm saying? Um, entertainment has grown immensely, from my view anyway, within these past six, seven years that I've been doing the museum TV. Um, and each person at this table has a very important story towards the buildup of the entertainment um, realm, just seeing that we're loving right now. Every single person at this table. Um, to my right, actually, is Chantel's dad. I know he look like bro, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it's Chantel's dad, and um, he's a heavy pioneer. Now, I mentioned Jeff and Dex. Um, we're definitely going to tie the story all in. But, Dad, if you can definitely just give the people a solid rundown, because Chantel's success is definitely great, but we got to definitely acknowledge, you know, the roots that it comes from as well, you know what I'm saying? So um, this is Terrell Calloway. Um, and um, Terrell, if you could just give him a solid, you know, um, just rundown of your history in the city. We'll give him two mics. That's oh, all, that, that's, okay. that's, that's how much. <laughs> two chains, two mics. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'm my... sorry, real quick. I didn't mean to cut you off because I know you might be a little too humble for him. First <laughs> black club owner in the city. Mm -hmm. All right. The very first club owner that was of our pigment in the city. Man, go ahead, brother. Well, let me not say that. There were many club owners before me, but I was the first multi-million dollar club owner. Talk that so talk. So we <laughs> had, uh, we were the first like two million dollar producing a year nightclub. This was back 30 years ago when that was unheard of. We were on a club called The Gallery. I, I started my legacy as a promoter, just doing nights in, in various white clubs across the, the city and um, happened to come upon uh, an opportunity to own my own club called The Gallery, which is legendary today. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, just tremendous opportunities came my way. I was a national tour um, 
marketing manager for Prince. Okay. I worked for Prince for Prince. over 10 I... years, different tours over the past 10 years. I've done and produced over 300 um, entertainment, uh, over 3,000 entertainment events mm. over the years. Um, and just been involved with uh, a number of things in the um, black entertainment community here in Massachusetts and mm -hmm. around the world. So mm -hmm. my travels with, with Prince took me everywhere in, in all 50 states and probably about 10 different countries. Beautiful. This that's is, that's like honestly like crazy because I mean, me myself, what I, what I do with my vlog, I really look to be selfless in order to be able to show other people that, you know, you can be too, you know what I'm saying? Like one of the biggest things with the culture here, I feel, you know, there's a stigma of, you know, this crab in a barrel that we always talk about, but like there are figures such as yourself that have shown the selflessness and of, you know what I'm saying? There are stories that, that, that stemmed off of your story, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, there's always clues within success, you know what I'm saying? Like these are cliches that permeate through generations and it's just like, all right, cool. If we can't pick up those gems because of our ignorance, then you know what I'm saying? This is why platforms like this exist. So I mean, you being selfless, we can talk about the people at this table, but who are some other people that were able to, you know, um, honestly, you know, enjoy the fruits of your labor, essentially. I know you've kind of helped out with people such as Free, you know what I'm saying, from 106 in Park, you know what I'm saying, just to kind of open the, open the conversation. But um, other than Free, can you kind of give the people, the audience, you know what I'm saying, uh, certain people that you, you might have been able to help out along their way? Well, there's been plenty of um, entertainment. Shout out 106 and Park, by the way. Yes, I'm so sorry. Free, I just talked with Free uh, a couple of days ago. We we're working on um, doing some things for the city. As a part of my legacy, right now I'm focused on giving back. Of course. And um, um, through just my legacy of things that I've done, um, that's um, been my focus. and. Um, I'm happy to, to, to share all that stuff um, with Beautiful. you. So, Beautiful. Um, one of the organizations we just start, we started a Black Economic Council of Massachusetts, which through that we're going to um, show entrepreneurs. My focus is going to be on entertainment entrepreneurism and, and okay. help young black um, entertainment entrepreneurs develop real business strategy for growth and and coming up with their ideas and showing them how to translation, translate it into business. Um, Beautiful. Monetize their ideas. Thank you. Yeah. Now, we, you know, I know I 100% appreciate that. I know my, you know what I'm saying, my crew here helping 100% appreciates that. Mm -hmm. But um, just to kind of tie things in and bring the conversation back, Jeff, mm -hmm. I know, you know, you definitely had a tie within, you know, um, the gallery it was, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, if, if you can kind of tell the people, and don't, Jeff, I know how you are. Nah, let yeah. the people know who you nah, are, my honestly, bro, and then let me well, know. Nah, see, I got to, first and foremost, I got to thank Taro, because you know he gave me my first opportunity to get in the club atmosphere. Nice. To really make me understand that DJing was my calling. To go in there, to DJ. Um, not even that, but just to walk in the club and the first thing people say, did you play yet? Nah, all right, cool, I'm going to drink, get ready. <laughs> so I appreciate you, Terrell, thank you. Oh, if thank I never you, told you, thank you. you. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, so, no, yeah. man, I'm oh, just, no, you know yeah. me, I'm just a cool, humble guy, man. Oh, cool, I did cool, a lot of cool. things, I man. know how you are, Jeff. I mean, if you, if you want to talk about you got to talk. Talk that about talk. Man. Look, first and foremost, my man Jeff Two Times mm -hmm. is also a part of um, the original members of Armadi RSO, mm -hmm. you yes. know what I'm saying? Let's, you know, if we talk in hip hop, you know, there's no not talking okay, Jeff well, when we talk in Boston. See, you know we say that it's like me even being here in the Strand. This was like our home. Like mm. every time we came here to perform, we tore the roof off this building. Like I figured it out on this stage, the do's and don'ts as a DJ. Mm. You know what I mean? Like right I even burnt my hair doing a fire trick here because it started here, <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I came in here and I walked down the stairs, I looked around, I was like, damn, this is where it started at, man. So to sit on this stage and talk with y'all, to me, is historical. Beautiful. And Shanta, I honestly want to kind of shift things towards your way because um, you were telling me about a huge event that you had that was sponsored by Buzz, um, Budweiser, right? And um, if you can kind of give the people a, a little bit of a rundown of that, because we got to always, you know, kind of throw that asterisk in there, because that was before social media. Yeah. So we're talking about moving the word around. It's a lot difficult. You know what I'm saying? You have mm -hmm. to go from people to people. So if you can kind of bring us back to that. For sure. So that was many years ago. Um, 
my you know we always look to our parents to you know be our leaders and I definitely followed my dad's footsteps and you know caught the entertainment uh, industry bug as a young child and just you know, I was in the club very young. I would say daddy turned me out. I was in the club at eight, nine years old, sneaking up on the dance floor, dancing in the gallery. That, um, story, at, story at the tunnel. On stage with Prince. I've definitely had some epic experiences in my life. Um, one that stands out, Prince is my all time favorite artist and will forever be just because I got to really experience him Respect. on an intimate level. Um, but no, my, um, my dad taught me everything I know. My dad is, all the reason my mom and my dad both my parents were the reason for my success you know they're extremely creative people and just growing up in the industry and watching them as entrepreneurs I just soaked it all up you know representation matters um, but so one of my first events I did on my own so just a little bit back my first job out of college was working for my father and I hated it because he's daddy of course and he was really tough on me but I learned so much and um, but at a certain point, I just wanted to have my own name and do my own thing. And, you know, I was really grateful because he did allow me to do that. And so one of my first um, I became an event planner. I went to school in New York. I got certified as an event planner from FIT. And then one of the first events I did was sponsored by Budweiser. And it was called the Mix Master King Competition. And Achoo, that's how I met this dude over here, <laughs> since we haven't given him an introduction Mr. yet. Mr. Johnny Walker. Yeah. Lucky I wasn't around. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was an epic <laughs> event that my dad really allowed me to just totally produce on my own. And, Dad, I really appreciate you for letting me do that because it, it was a good time, wasn't it? So. Yeah. And so the, it was a DJ battle that I put together. I'm a hip-hop head, y'all. Like, you all need to get stripes don't, on her right now. Y'all don't know. I'm a hip-hop head. I'm she got to do this on her feet, right? Man. I'm a student of the culture. Hip hop raised me. I always tell people the first hip hop song I ever heard was in '88. It was N.W.A. Dope Man. I've been turned out ever since. Right. So <laughs> I put together um, a DJ battle that traveled all over the city. It was at different venues all over the city, and it, it led up to um, a finale. And Dex won the finale. And the uh, what category was it, Dex? Oh New my school? God, Dex. At, at, at this time, if, give him the mic. Give him, yeah. <laughs> at, at, at this time, that's definitely go ahead and give him um, a solid intro, bro. But yeah. definitely get into the story. Uh, okay, well. Tell DJ. him about the Mixed Master King competition and how you received it and how, you know. I mean, shout out to all the DJs that took part in it. Um, I won the category for New Jack. New for Jack. DJs for New Jack. And I still have my trophy, man. Really? I still, still have the trophy. That. that was. Uh, I think I 2003, saying, four. I know I'm gonna send you a picture to Troll. I'm gonna send wow, you that picture. Twelve years ago. Wow. Okay. I was oh three. I was and, twelve years and old. That's a fact. Honestly, <laughs> and to be at this table, like like to chime off what Jeff said, to be at this table and to be at this table with Taro, because as a kid, if you was an up and coming DJ, you wanted to DJ for this man. Mm. <laughs> if you Respect. if you was a, if Respect. you was a, in Boston, wherever, if you knew. That name Callaway, how much weight that held. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Callaway, I ain't gonna mention them other names, but if it wasn't for Callaway, there wouldn't be no them. Talk that talk. And I love that. for Chantel to have me part of that competition, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I didn't do the fire trick, but <laughs> I, I learned. I learned. I learned a lot from. Jeff, and even to this day, sometimes it still blows my mind from being that kid, listening to Jeff on the radio, recording him on a cassette, wow. mimicking wow. his routines in my house. Respect, man. Dude, y'all about to shut to now, whole tip, man. To now, to now being, that's my brother. 100%. You don't know how many times I used to try to get advice from this and I get this look like, mm. <laughs> and no, that's you know, so up, I took man. the I took the acknowledge, I took the acknowledgement that I learned from. If I'm gonna say DJs, I'm gonna say Jeff two times, Flex the Ice Man, Chief Rock and Mo D. Even I learned some stuff from um, 
Drew Nice, Chubby Chubb. Like I basically took a lot of knowledge I, I learned from them guys mm -hmm. to create and to develop that drive mm -hmm. to know I'm a force to be reckoned with for one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But always stay humble because this is Boston. Yeah. You can be hot one minute. Mm -hmm. And cold and the next. you blink your eyes three times, that third time, you be cold as ice out here. That's a fact. So me learning from, like I said, my oldest brother's name is Jeff, matter of fact, too. So That's crazy. So it's my oldest brother who got me into it. But I learned from Jeff two times, Flex the Ice Man. Mm -hmm. Those were my main three go-to learn. Okay. Learning the whole culture, like – this is not a skill. Mm -hmm. This is a culture. This is what we breed. Mm -hmm. So when Chantel was able to put me in the battle, mm -hmm. for one, I'm gonna tell you this. I ain't gonna lie. When we did it at um, the, the the round at Slades, mm -hmm. my uncle at the time worked for Budweiser. I wasn't gonna lose that round. <laughs> I couldn't lose that round. My uncle he was gonna said, hear it at the crib. Oh no, <laughs> my uncle worked for no, no, no. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't. I had to. I had to go crazy. And then the other locations, it, it went from being. I had to basically show I was a party rocker, but also a trick DJ. Yeah. Mm. And that basically stems from learning from Flex mm -hmm. and Two. So, I mean, Do you remember we had the category? I think it was turntableist and the white I, boy who rocked it. What was his name? Uh, oh my God, he was like well known around the world. But he was we, it lazy. I don't know if it was lazy boy. Was it lazy boy? It might have been. I lazy, think it was lazy it boy. Might have been lazy. Boy. It was lazy okay. boy because he's might, a fireman now. Yeah, and lazy boy. He, yeah, that's lazy boy. Man, yeah. I I had never seen anything like that. This this dude. You remember, we were at Breezeway, and a lot yeah. of these venues we were at aren't even around anymore. Like Which Breezeway, yeah. lazy Cafe, um, Lazy Boy rocked it. We had like the hottest DJs in in Boston participate, and it was like a, a huge major mm. event. Yeah, but, so, I didn't I mean, go up against Lazy Boy. I, 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 listen, I wasn't I, jumping out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I, I gotta definitely bring it, you know, full circle. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's kind of giving their stories and like kind of like their background, you know. But again, like you know, we always talk about success stories coming out the city and how you know we can benefit from them. But everybody at this table has that selfless bone within them. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, you know, a lot has been rooted from Brother Terrell here. But it's like Jeff can tell you why and where he's come from. Chantel could do the same, Dex can do the same, you know what I'm saying? These type of things are, are just very, very, very like important, I feel, to any creative's, you know, growth. You gotta know where you came from in order to know where you're going, you know what I'm saying? So um, um, I honestly wanna kinda get into why we're here, which is rhyme antics, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, we've definitely talked about, you know, just a bit of the entertainment history in Boston to sit there and say that there isn't any is a complete lie, because we've had nothing but examples here at this table. Um, but Chantel, everybody at this table has been, you know, is, you know, got some sort of a finger on this right now, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's dope. Um, so I just kind of wanted to open up some questions um, in terms of how you kind of got here, because I mean, to be the first black board game inventor, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, you come from Boston, a city where entertainment isn't glorified like that, you know what I'm saying? When we're talking about sports, which is cool, you know what I'm saying? Nobody gonna, you know, you know be upset at the sports, but can you kind of bring us in um, into rhyme antics? And we're, and we're gonna do that by these questions. Mm -hmm. um, me personally, I, I honestly gotta ask, kind of being a, a, a sponge to just business um, within entertainment and just in general, how do you, you know, get to the point where your game is in a Walmart and a Target? You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel? Yeah, no, I mean, well, it's definitely been um, a long road. This is the 10th year that I've been working on, you know, making this game uh, a huge success and creating an iconic brand. And I believe it's because I started with that goal in the beginning. Um, when you commit to doing something, you got to dream big in the beginning. You know what I mean? You got to start with that goal overall. And so this was um, me creating this game and bringing it to fruition really stems from me hitting like a rock bottom situation, um, me really losing myself and then finding myself through making this product a success. Mm. Um, and so like, 
you know, a lot of people know that, like, I got in big trouble in Atlanta, like, 10 years ago. And Ooh, I got to <laughs> ask about that bad boy. And, I got to ask about that bad boy. I mean, it was, I, I don't care. I talk about it now. I talk about it all the time if, if anyone wants to know. But, yeah, you know, sometimes you got to lose yourself to find yourself. And that's what happened with this. Um, you know, I lost myself. I, I hit rock bottom. Um, I was completely lost spiritually. And um, it was through, like, my conversations with God and remembering my greatness mm -hmm. um, and remembering, moreover, that, you know, education is really the passport to any success. You have to educate yourself fully and thoroughly and decide you're going to master something. And that's what I committed to do. Um, and so only because of that was I able to, you know, make this game um, a, the success it is today. And my passion for the community and my passion for the culture of hip hop and wanting to add value to both of those things is what's kept me hanging in there so long because I've wanted to definitely give up many times within this journey. And I didn't just because it's the legacy of my family. Like my name is on this game. The mm -hmm. Callaway name is on this game. Callaway you know? Creatives. You go into these stores and you see, you know, just for anyone who wants to know, like, Stores like Target and Walmart, which are considered big box retailers, black-owned businesses control less than 1% of the shelf space. So you go in there, there's 20,000 products. There's like maybe 30 that are black-owned. Mm. And so um, it was always my goal to get there um, and to become, you know, that successful um, with creating a legacy, not just for my family, but, you know, for black inventors, black, other black creators, and just let you know you can dream that big and, and achieve that success regardless of your past circumstances as long as you're, you're committed and passionate about it. But can we, can we talk about that, the type of adversity that you were definitely dealing with? Um, yeah. 100%, I encourage y'all to Google it, you know what I'm saying? We're not even gonna get too crazy into it, but 100% encourage y'all to Google it, you know what I'm saying? It is on the Googles for you, but how did those times kind of, you know, looking back, can you double back down to see why you kind of got there and what got you out of that to be able to become who you are today? Make sure y'all Google that for real. There's no reason why we're bringing this up. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm like, I'm very fearless. So I think that my rock bottom situation, what it did teach me. So for those who you don't know, I robbed a bank. I don't want to say. I did. I, you know, it's it's a very high profile thing. Um, I robbed a bank in Atlanta, 2010. And one thing it did teach me was that I am very fearless. And so most criminals who are in jail just have their energy directed in the wrong way. Mm. They have all this powerful knowledge and energy and ability to do amazing things, but it's just directed in a negative way. And so I just refo refocused my energy. And I was like, you know what? Um, I'm super fearless. I have the ability to do anything, obviously. <laughs> so I'm just going to focus that energy <laughs> on doing, fact. on on creating excellence and not, you know, Fuck shit, really, you know? 100%. Um, <laughs> Jeff, okay. Jeff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I understand you say you feel us, but out of all the things you could have did when you was at that low point, mm -hmm. why the bank? <laughs> like, for, seriously, like, why that? Why the bank? Um, well, to be honest, I had hit, like, financially, I was living in Atlanta at the time. I'm a single mom. Um, I had just lost my job maybe, like, three months prior. And funny enough, I was working for this dude who was trying to run a Ponzi scheme, right? And I didn't know who I was working for. He, schemes, yeah, right? okay. yeah, no, a Ponzi, Ponzi scheme. Yeah, Meaning, yeah. so he had this fake business and mm -hmm. he was trying to invest in entrepreneurs and gain equity of their businesses mm -hmm. before he would give them capital. So he was trying to like, That's you know, crazy. be slick. That's and it's like no real business person would fall for that. So his scheme mm -hmm. quickly got revealed, right? Mm -hmm. And but in the process of that, I thought he was legit because, you know, one thing about Atlanta, Atlanta, and this is why so I left, Atlanta they can be a huge facade. It's home of black they Hollywood. Hustlers. There's a, there's a lot of fronting going on down there. And so this guy, he had all the material things that made him look like he was legit. He had the mansion. Mm -hmm. I was going to work at a mansion every day. He had a Lambo. 
But you know what? And I am going to put his ass out there. His name was Mr. Billions. And I should have known by that name. I should have known by the Mr. name Billions. that he was full of shit. Right? <laughs> right? And so he drove a Lambo. He had the big mansion. So come to find out, this dude was the husband of... Uh, his wife was the cousin of a baseball player whose house they were house sitting. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> they were house sitting. That's not like something that could happen in, in LA, legit. I mean, Black really. For real. So, you know, this dude's down in Florida playing baseball and just has a mansion and is letting his cousin sit in the mansion. Mm -hmm. they, and they decided they were going to try and come up and yeah. actually live that life, you no, know? That's, so, that's, that's crazy. So he took on like three employees. There was three of us who he hired. And so he gave us, the way he got us is he gave us an initial retainer. But then, so a month goes by and nobody's getting paid, right? We're like, yo, where's our check? What, 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 what are we doing? You missed the billions, right? Yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Cut the what's going check. On? There was no money. And so, you know, by that time, I'm letting two months go by and I got car note and rent to pay. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? And so it was just like, uh, it, it was it was crazy. My car broke down in Atlanta. You need a car. Hundred percent. You know, Christmas 100%. was coming up. I was under a lot of pressure. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. It was very stupid. I was very lost. Um, but you know, I did some dumb shit. I made a, a poor choice. But and uh, but we're one hundred percent not here, obviously, to tear you down. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Of course. End of the day, like you know. We really want the viewers to understand, you know, your circumstances aren't who you are. You know what I'm exactly. saying? You, you unfortunately had somebody kind of had you go down a rabbit hole. We all, you know what I'm saying, take tumbles, but it's how mm -hmm. we come back up. And you've come back up in a very, very, and very positive way. there are a way. lot of success stories of people who have been in jail and who have mm -hmm. come out and, you know, created an amazing amount of success just by, you know, going through that adversity. But I would say the, the biggest issue that I, the biggest challenge that I um, have had to overcome is like when, when it came to raising money for the business and I moved to New York and you know, I'm now having to talk to investors about investing in me and I have this, you know, mm -hmm. this thing on my shoulder, the shame of that and ha you know, having to overcome my self shame and you know, thinking that these investors aren't gonna trust me because you know I have a bank robbery, which is you know some level of fraud and, and criminal behavior, um, having to overcome that mentally. So I would say it's the mental work you do on yourself that allows you to overcome more than anything else. You have mm. to do a lot of self-development and mental work, with, which I think is the hardest work to do because a lot of people aren't willing to really look at themselves and wanna fix themselves and heal themselves. Their, their, mental, their mental health issues, their traumas, all that stuff. And the impact on the family. The yes, impact and the, the impact in the family. I, I really embarrassed my family. I had a lot of shame, like I said, the shame part. You know what I mean? The shame, you know, disappointing my son, disappointing my dad, you know, just having dad, to overcome you know, that shame was a lot. Obviously, you know, we're, we're here celebrating a very glorious moment, but in that moment in time, like, how was that, you know, for you um, in, in, in the family, if you could speak for the family? And so. how do you feel now, Dad? Well, I was certainly at that point I you know I remember the morning or 12 o'clock New Year's Eve I'm on my knees in prayer at Jubilee Christian, Christian Church when my phone starts blowing up we're praying wishing the new year and and I picked up the phone call and somebody said um, Taro, 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 your daughter's all over the news down here in Atlanta. She's been involved in a bank robbery. I said, what? And um, I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. Um, called my whole family and just we, you know, I saw her. the internet was going crazy. Um, and it was very... I, I, I didn't understand, you know, where this came from. And then they were um, linking, you know, my name in the entertainment business. And mm. I mean, it was all over the entertainment news in, in Boston. And, and um, it was really, really disappointing. Um, you know, but we all came together as a family and we, <sighs> You know, we, we helped, you know, 
my daughter, my baby, no matter what, you know, I had 100%. to to pull that stuff to the side. That's that and, pop love right there. And um yeah. and we, we we had to come up with the, the strategy and the money and I, I think a lot of our goodwill um, around the world was at work and everything because a, a case like that took a lot of um, connections mm -hmm. and, 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 and money to um, to get her out and she was able to to get out and 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 you know we forgave her and this struggle to her success today is just God working in our lives and we're God fearing people and we 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 pray that's what got us through this mm. this time. Yeah, I want to mm. just reiterate Bless. again that like the spirituality and the, the spiritual element is so important. You know, like so w what I learned most from that experience was like some people go to jail over and over and over again and disappoint themselves and their family over and over again. Like I didn't take my second chance for granted. Mm. Um, <coughs> and um, I really just used that situation as a teachable moment and you know um changed my life i made a commitment to change my life and i was very very firm on that respect to change my life and now i i, I gotta mention that you know uh they, they continue to build more prisons despite recidivism right mm -hmm. but these aren't things that are holding us back, you know what I'm saying? Like, Rhyme Antics has grown. Um, I've seen it grow personally, you know what I'm saying? I'm the young pup at the table, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing a lot of the history that y'all put me on to today. And still very much proud that I've been able to work with you, um, Chantel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all that ain't about nothing to me, you know what I'm saying? It's really how you kind of come back. So I know everybody at this table, you know, feels the same. Um, Dex, obviously, you know, you've um, been a beneficiary of just all the energy at this table right now, brother. Like, do you have any um, questions? Do you have a question at all for Chantel? So my question is, we all know you fell in love with NWA Dope Man <laughs> that got you into hip hop. Yeah, yeah. But when and what gave you that, that idea to come up with the, with the game? Smart. I could tell you when I came up at the museum. Yeah. But you got to tell us, like, what was that, like, moment? Like, oh. Moment, like, yeah, no, so process. Rhyme Antics is really the original idea of my dad. He birthed this idea. Mm. So um, Thanksgiving night, uh, the family, you know, it's, it's a tradition to play games yeah. okay. during the holidays. And, you know, we were just tired of playing Taboo and Catchphrase for, like, 30 years or whatever. <laughs> and we were together as a family. And he his creative genius, he came up with this call and response game. And of course, like every member of the family had something to add to it, you know, like, oh, it should be like this, it should be like that. And then, you know, so the idea of the, this idea sat in the family for like seven years. And then it, it was always something in the back of my mind, like there really needs to be a game like this on the market because all the games you play we, that we see have, been around for decades or that you know i think um cards against humanity was the newest game to come out at that point um in like 2010 and it was just like okay but this is just still another one of those subjective kind of card games where you answer questions is based on you know like your opinion of something mm -hmm. but there was nothing that spoke to the culture of hip-hop specifically and then there was nothing that was you know, added value, like it being educational. And so, you know, me, I was always a scholar in school. I did very well. I actually like graduated a year early, top of my class in high school. Talk that talk. <laughs> and so I've always been a logophile, which is like a lover of words. I love vocabulary. And that's why I love hip hop because, you know, lyrical geniuses, they spit in these bars. People like Nas, you know, they're telling these dope stories, spitting Oops. bars. Yeah, yeah. They're really geniuses. You know what I mean? It takes a high level of intellect to be a dope MC. And so, you know, I wanted to pay homage to the culture. And so as I started developing it, I realized that that's what it was doing, you know, paying homage to the culture with being an educational game. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, um, that, that that's what it is. That's what drove me, the passion behind the culture and then wanting to, you know, add value to the culture and you know to to the legacy of my family and beautiful to me so <laughs> my man T man so 
<laughs> he came up with the concept of the game for the most part. And Chateau really is like he threw the alley. And Chateau was Blake Griffin coming through with his slim, right? He didn't believe in it. I asked this dude <laughs> to invest in the beginning. He didn't oh, think I was, it was going to be where it is today. No, nah, respect. <laughs> this, that, I, I, I didn't know this side of the story. So that's, this, is, this is very dope. I can't lie. Um, so, I mean, looking at where it's come to from that, oh, let's do this. You know, like from your perspective, like, you know, how is this how is this baby grown from your perspective well it it's grown tremendously i mean she's taken the 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 basic concept and and monetized it and learned about you know getting investors including me <laughs> i was able to creatively invest in the company i got her using her talent i knew that i would be able to um enter her in competitions that I knew that she would win. So there was a $5,000 prize for my church at Jubilee. Mm -hmm. She easily won that, that uh, competition. Then there was a mass challenge mm -hmm. uh, competition for $10,000. She won that competition. Right. Okay. So, so there goes $15,000 of seed right. money right. Yeah. into her company. Right. So wait, this wait, is, this wait, is wait. how our family works, yeah. right? Yeah, respect, so, respect. OPM, respect. other Nepotism. people's money. Nepotism. Right. So, yeah, I mean. So I, I, I raised $15,000 to get my daughter uh, uh, Kickstart. kickstarted. And then she did her Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. We got another $10,000. Yeah. So no, we, that's beautiful. We, we put it together. And I just want to let entrepreneurs know that if you have a dream and a vision, you put focus, um, work into it, it can ultimately be, come true. It, it really, you know, what you put in, it's like from the Bible, what you reap is what you sow. What you put in is what you get out. You put in a little, you get a little back. Right. You put in a lot, the chances of you getting a lot back is... We know sowing right. season, but we never know reaping season. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, are you about to say something? I just want to say I'm so happy that this group of entrepreneurs and DJs have really made me think about my legacy and how you young people are... And, and, and just the, the, the homage that you all have given to me and mm -hmm. as a, as a um, I just want to make sure you come in and loud thank clear. you as a, as, a, you. as a as a entertainment entrepreneur here in Boston I want to thank you guys right, for being a part you. of no, my, my legacy thank you. and I didn't even know I had to thank you before today you know <laughs> well, what I'm saying so it's one of them things thank you it's been a tremendous run and you know my next you know 50 years on this planet will uh, definitely um, this inspiration has given me an, a new foundation to to build from. I'm so proud of my daughter, and in this era of uh, Black History Month that we're celebrating, and for my daughter to be a first yeah, yeah. is is uh, amazing. And it's say. all because of you. No, and so you. I want to say a, that, a quote that speaks to me every time, like, uh, true power, it says power is not about control, power is about influence, and so you've influenced you know, a generation and a, mm -hmm. a, a, the culture um, and a community. Mm -hmm. um, you are definitely one of the pioneers here in, in Boston. So like, Thank it was you. really important to have yeah, you here and that. give 100%. you your flowers while, while you're here. 100%, 100%, 100%. I mean, to add on to what Chantel saying, I mean, you have to look at, if you look at my generation, the generation after that, and after that is Noble's generation. If it wasn't for people like you, there wouldn't be so many promoters mm -hmm. of African dis African American yeah, descent. No, 100%, no, that's real, that's there real. Went, listen, I'll that say that down Kim, effect is crazy. If it wasn't for this guy, I'm a, I gotta, can I get on my bull? Can I get on my bull? Go ahead, <laughs> big dog, go ahead, go ahead, big dog. Right, I gotta edit this, so you I'm good, say, go ahead. I'ma say this and y'all get this foot. If it wasn't for this guy here, all y'all fighting to be downtown, yeah. trying to do shows and all that. If it wasn't for this man here, <laughs> y'all be still swimming in your daddies. <laughs> yes, yeah. and, and you know what? I just, I just really got to. We didn't even speak about the epic hair show that used to happen every year. The hair show was an event. 
10 years running that happened at downtown at the Roxy, mm -hmm. you know, that Tarot produced every mm -hmm. year. It was the biggest and baddest event mm -hmm. in Boston. I mean, people would literally plan their year around <laughs> yes. coming to this event every year. People, all yes. the athletes were there. Anybody mm -hmm. who was anybody, people would come from out of town to come to the hair show at the Roxy. You know, 3,000 people there every single year. So it was definitely an epic event. And you know, I wish we could have had another 10 years, but everything got to, you know, all thing, all good things got to come to an end. Back off what you're saying, like, when when your dad decided to step down, he left a void. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tried, tried to do it, and they failed. Right. It was okay, but what he created at that time, mm -hmm. they'll never see that again in Boston. Mm. Like, the, the nightlife that he set, the presence and the tone of the nightlife that he set, it's no lie, man. I, I can't yeah, lie. Um, I definitely want to go to his final thoughts because um, I would definitely want to, you know what I'm saying, round circle this bad boy back mm -hmm. in. Um, does anybody have any final thoughts? Um, Anyone have any questions for me? My thing is, it's my qu question. It's my okay, um, not to keep going back, but let me ask you a question. If you think, now when the game was put to life, right, mm -hmm. was that before the situation or after the situation? This was after. This okay. was literally. So let me ask you a question. Go ahead. So you think if that situation never had happened, do you, you think, think you would have created came? this right here? I mean, no, I probably would have. If I probably would have uh, robbed ten more banks. So, so <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, no, what I'm saying is, sometimes things happen I'll, for I'll various edit that reasons. Out, bro. You know what I mean? No, keep that. No, so, no, certain things happen for various reasons. Right, right. Because at the end of the day, I understand what you went through, but knowing you you've always been straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was something that happened that, let's say that it didn't pan out that way, we wouldn't be sitting here today to commend you on this game. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. what you show people, like, things happen, but you can bounce back. 100%. You know what I mean? Do For all sure. well, However people feel, you created something that they can't take from you. And straighten, I, you know that, I mean? straighten that comment out because that was not true. That was Dad, a joke. It's, it's a joke. <laughs> it's okay. a joke. All right. I want to make that Laugh. Ha ha. He's, he's still so sensitive about what it. I'm a, what I'm going to also say for those watching is um, Chantel also has interviews on big platforms that I more than likely mm -hmm. know. Sway's Universe. Shout out mm -hmm. to big homie Sway. Um, as well as The Breakfast Club. I'm sure right. all y'all know about The Breakfast mm -hmm. Club. She has a solid 21, 22 minute interview on there. Um, so, um, Chantel, real quick before we end off, can you actually tell maybe an inspiring game board inventor or just an inspiring creative or maybe just an inspiring creative a female, you know what I'm saying, coming up in the city, mm. how was it like, you know, um, getting in contact with like a Charlemagne or a Sway and having them be so involved and honestly being spokespeople for you. Because I've seen plenty of times Charlemagne has post posted about um, Ryan Mantix and then obviously I've seen the interview with Sway. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we go about linking those connections? And um, the last thing I was gonna ask on, actually go ahead and answer that because I have just one last question and then we could definitely kind of wrap things up. Yeah, um, I mean, I would just say it goes back to being completely fearless. I, I want to tell this story about Charlemagne because um, it's, it's one of those pivotal moments in my journey. Um, I was a bartender in New York City. I worked for this like elite catering company and you know we always catered for high profile events. And this was, you know, and during this journey I've wanted to give up like four times. And this was maybe, um, this was in 2019. Um, I was a bartender, at, I was bartending the YouTube Awards at Radio City Music Hall and I had just given up on the game. I had shelved it, I had just finished my real estate exam and I was like, you know, fuck this, I'm gonna go be a real estate agent, you know? Like, cause it was taking too long. It was like year seven. I was just like really tired of being broke. And you know, I was literally a Uber driver selling games out the back of my car. <laughs> and so um, these I'm are the stories the nobody really knows about my grind. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, there's no overnight success. I've had like mm -hmm. 10 years of really grinding hard and not giving up on making it a success but sometimes you know I would have these low points where I'm like I'm not doing this anymore you know I'm done it's not really you know the, the financial rewards are not adding up so um, I was done with the game 
But uh, Nipsey Hussle had just died. And um, RIP man. Yeah, RIP Nip. I had, I knew who Nip was, but I hadn't had a chance to listen to his album. And I listened to his whole album the night he died. And that album literally inspired me to spoke to go you. back. Yeah, it spoke to my heart. It spoke to my spirit. It was like he was speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, don't give up. The marathon continues. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I literally met Charlemagne three days later um, at that award show. I remember I was bartending. I left my port. Like, there was nobody there. I, I left my port. I had, happened to have a game in my bag. I left, I left where I was at. I, I went to go get a game, and I pitched him on the spot. And so we're not supposed to do that. You can get right. fired yeah. for doing that, mm-hmm. right? But I didn't care. It's like I was on a mission. That's mm-hmm. what I was told to do. Talk, and, talk. you know, he, he literally, like, changed my life. You know, when I did that because I was fearless enough to go up to him, show him the game, and I asked him on the spot, I was like, you know, can I come on, you know, your podcast, which is The Brilliant Idiots, Mm -hmm. and talk about my game. I watched that too. He is so humble and cool. This dude gave me his number, like, right on the spot. And, you know, sometimes, like, when you meet celebrities, they'll curve you. They'll be like, oh, talk to my, my manager or whatever. But, no, he gave me his number, and he called me, and he was like, you know, save my number. So it was, like, real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what I've learned, too. When, when it's real, you know immediately. Someone doesn't mm-hmm. bullshit you. You yeah. don't have to chase them. When it's real, they, they fuck with you automatically. And yeah, so that's what he extras. did. And um, I haven't really talked about it on a large platform, but I will say last year Charlemagne did invest in the company, so he's actually a partner now. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Now see the God, yo. <laughs> ain't a single person in Boston talking crazy about see the God no more, man. Nah, you know he's not he's a single really person. an amazing, kind-hearted, you know, person. He's really for the culture. He's really about black businesses and you know about black females, you know, supporting black females in a major way. And so he has done that and he's just been, you know, an amazing blessing to me. But Chantel, speaking about black females Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I'm I'm somebody that's a heavy supporter of my queens, you know what I'm saying? I love my queens that are genuinely doing, you know what I'm saying? Crazy stuff out here. Like, I I love that. Um, For the queens that are watching, What's your biggest piece of advice dealing with such a male-dominated industry, whether it was entertainment, whether it was music, whether it was the board game industry? Yeah. That's, Being fearless, you talked about a lot today. Yeah. Um, what's the biggest piece of advice that you would give to, you know what I'm saying, young young women, you know what I'm saying? That's a great question, and it's one, like, I'm really happy to answer. So being in this male-dominated hip-hop, you know, entertainment industry, I will say, That Me Too movement is real. (laughs) I've been tried so many times, but when you enter any industry, you have to be strong. You have to be, uh, know who you are as a woman and know your power as a woman and know that, you know, you control the narrative and the brand that is you. And so you have to know automatically that, sorry guys, but men are pigs. Except for us. (laughs) Not you guys, but. We honey glaze bakers. We honey glaze bakers. Oh, honey glaze bakers. We honey glaze. (laughs) No, but I mean, I've encountered a lot of that stuff, you know, like, um, and I've been tried many times, but I feel like when I was very you know just keep it business shut down all that shit Mm -hmm. it's business and business only Mm -hmm. you have to know that this entertainment industry is very very small it's very Mm -hmm. very small everybody talks and once you get you know you start messing with somebody everybody knows your business very quickly and so just keep if you're a woman in the entertainment industry you got to keep you know your personal interests outside of the industry Mm -hmm. and be respected because it's all about respect first and so when you shut things down and you're like listen this is about my game and my project either you helping or you not and you move on and and don't be swayed by you know someone trying to hit on you or kick it to you i've you know i've had to and especially in the beginning stages when I first moved to New York, I had to deal with a lot of that. You know, someone trying to play you because they say they know somebody and, you know, but trying to get with you to use leverage and stuff. You got to play chess all the time in this business world. So Dude, that's what I would say. I feel like, you know, and, you know, I'm going to speak for my kings, you know what I'm saying? I feel like <laughs> the real kings, you know what I'm saying, respect that, you know what I'm right. saying, and let that rock, you know right. what I mean? Because end of the day, as a guy, you don't want people out here talking about, yo, he's just going to try and, you know what I'm saying, woo, woo, woo. Right, right, right. So, you know, 100%, um, and I 
definitely appreciate you answering that. And I, I definitely see that being probably the biggest um, struggle that I see with young female creatives that I've come around as well. For sure. um, so, I mean, Chantal, I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, setting all this up, you know what I'm saying? This has been sponsored by Rhyme Antics, you know what I'm saying? So Rhyme Antics taking care of the museum TV today, taking care of my team, you know what I'm saying? Team, salute, right? Um, we gotta play a quick round. I need to see y'all's bars real quick. Oh, man. Yep, real quick, real quick. She gonna pop it out. <laughs> so we're gonna play a quick round, and then we're gonna end it off, but I definitely hope that y'all definitely got a lot out of this. Um, there's a lot of history told um a lot of gems to honestly draw strength from that's one of my biggest things you already know with the museum tv as you know my name is noble we have jeff Chantel, we have terrell calloway we have dj dex over here which you can listen to dj dex at 88.5 big city we got 87.7 fm over there as well um so definitely tap in we're gonna have everybody's information um chantelle's getting us ready for a round right now but hold on i have a question for you for who? Now, my question for you, Noble. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay. So, with you in getting in contact with myself and Jeff, mm -hmm. and now you're being introduced to a whole different generation, and Jeff and I, now you're meeting Chantel, Terrell, like, you're meeting, le like, I don't care anybody say, we're legends. <laughs> <laughs> we're legends. So, what is your take on learning and hearing the stories from our generation? Great question. Um, well, one thing I always say is, if you don't know where something came from, you more than likely don't know where it's going, right? Um, so I mean, learning the history to really be able to, one of my biggest <laughs> things with the museum TV has been bridging gaps and, you know, the young with the old, the backpackers with the, with, 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 with the hood guys, you know what I'm saying? Like really being like that, that, that mid ground. Um, Hearing all this honestly just brings more fuel to my fire and it kind of has me settle in and focus on where I want this Boston thing to go for real. You know what I mean? In terms of what I'm telling young homies, look, these are the guys, these are the figures, these are your role models. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, like me personally, I didn't know who my big homies was when I started the museum TV. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? But now I can. But these are, these are those things, like, before I started Museum TV, I was, I was a consumer, just like anybody else, you feel me? So it was just like, that's probably my biggest thing, is just understanding where this came from so I can better direct it as this spokesperson for the younger generation, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's like, I understand me being on radio, and you have two who very, I hate it, it's one of my biggest hate. I don't like using the word hate, mm -hmm. but I hate how to downplays what he's done yeah. for this culture. Nah, yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. And it's and it's like I really want him to speak a little bit more. He's but you traveled. Know, he's she can't tell. But you know. But the, this is the, about you, though. This is about this, you. Though. It's definitely. If that's, about, it's definitely about. Rhyme rhyme if you're gonna talk about rhyme antics, you're gonna talk about that. You have to talk about how Chantel brought him Nas, and at the end of the day. I was and gonna I, do and it. I, and I, I was brought gonna you do it. And I brought you no, in no, there. No, I no, brought, no. And a lot of people don't know is that when you listen to Nas, you listen to Nas still, still mad. Intro. You listen to that intro. Du, 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 that was produced du, du, du. by Boston's legend. JB may him rest in peace. JB passed? Yeah, he oh. did. Jeff Two Times and Benzino. That was produced by them guys. You can Google it and it's, you will see Hangman 3. When you see Hangman 3, that's what it is. So when your people don't understand who they know, understand it. You go to the museum, understand who was at this table. And at the end of the day, me and Noble, we the young guys. <laughs> You're talking about a king, a queen, and a king that established more than social media ever can do for you. Ah, Fendi. A lot of this was done before social media. Like me, I can clearly tell you that the internet and social media has helped me out a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? But how do you do that? How do you have that sort of impact without? You know what I'm saying? And, so that's huge. But that's, what, that's when the conversation, the communication, asks questions come into play. Like, 
I cannot say Chantel and her father did not play a part in who DJ Dex is. Mm -hmm. I cannot go in life and say Jeff two times didn't have a part in who DJ Dex is. Mm -hmm. I can't even say that for Chief Rock and Moe D. There's DJs that played a part in who DJ Dex is. And that's why when you when when you when me and you click, mm -hmm. me and you click naturally. Yeah, hundred percent. And I said, yo, anytime you want to know, make it happen. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Can I just say one other thing around legacy? You gotta hold the mic. Around okay. legacy, Boston has been probably the the most influential in terms of music. New kids on the block. Mm -hmm. People don't, you know what I'm saying? Right? New addition. Uh, new addition. Um, you know, they were the basis and they, mm -hmm. you know. About the funk all-stars. Dar Adam, Dar Adams was telling me about a lot of guys that were very influential. Um, yeah, Maurice Starr. Maurice I mean, Starr was the on. biggest I guy. Yeah, yeah. He always talked about Maurice Let's, Starr. What was the, what was the um, Johnson Crew. Johnson, Johnson Crew was Crew. another one. Yep. Yeah. The, the, um, the, the K Bernies. Um, Tavares. Tavares. Yeah, Tavares. So the foundation of, of black music in Boston. It's crazy. It's okay. crazy. Yeah. You know, when you think about the industry as a whole and all the music that started and then the people like me behind the scenes, like, mm -hmm. you know, I was the first promoter to promote New Kids on the Block. Mm. Two, I gave them $200. That's crazy. To play Nine Lands Down. This was 30 years ago. Dude, that they were crazy. just teenagers. Then. Mark, Mark Wahlberg used to rehearse at the gallery. Yeah, I, re yeah. I remember seeing him plenty of times after school rehearsing in the gallery. So, I mean, yeah. what, what are some other like big names that have kind of like cycled through Boston real quick? Um, I know we, we talked about Free, we talked about Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is another one that a lot of Sylvia people don't know cycles. Sylvia Rome. Donna Summers. Donna Summers, obviously. She went to the Burke? Get out of here, bro. <laughs> you know what? And that was a big question I had for the group collectively. Um, so, you know, Jeff and I had spoke about this topic kind of off camera, but I really want to know from everybody because I felt at a certain point that I had to move to New York in order to become successful in the entertainment industry. And so what I want to know, really for Jeff, because he's traveled the world, Terrell's traveled the world, but my question is, to make it big in the entertainment industry, do you feel that you have to leave the city? And my, I say yes, you do. Because the nucleus of the entertainment industry is not here. It's in New York, it's in LA, it's in you know, Atlanta, those, those bigger I think cities. We, we have a legacy of, of being foundational. So we're like the foundation. We're the, the jump off mm -hmm. seeming, the, the incub, incubator of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of of creativity in which we transcend all over the world. Mm. You know, if you think about all the groups that have come out of Boston, and you know, again, we talk about education with Berkeley, and mm -hmm. it, so we're, Boston is an incubator. You definitely come here to get educated, yes. and then, you know, you might leave and, um, but yeah, Jeff is being too modest, and I do no, want him to no. speak, because yesterday, right, we, we were here, and I had met a legend, Mike Bivens from New Edition for the first That's time, guy. right? That's guy. And yep. you know, I'm talking to Mike Bivens, Mike Bivens and he calls Jeff, which I did not expect, mm -hmm. right? And he was, I was telling him, oh, I have an event tomorrow at the Strand with Jeff two times. He was like, what, Jeff? And he just called him. So Jeff is really a pioneer in this industry as well. I've known Jeff for many, many yes. years. Yep. Um, he's always been, I wanted him a part of this conversation because um, he's just always been supportive of me, genuinely. Yeah. Genuinely hip -hop, supportive. We're talking about, don't forget about Guru. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, Guru. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. A lot of people don't even uh, know Guru's from, from Boston. Boston. Yeah, 100%. from Boston. 100%. I think, um, I think for us, it was, it was um, you know, Ray Benzino, he had a vision that in order for us to make great music, we had to get out of Boston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of recording out of town. Because, mm -hmm. you know, by us being here, just the distractions, we wouldn't be able to get it done. So we spent a lot of time away. Like we spent like three years in LA. We spent like two years in Houston. Like we would just pack up and just go. Like, you know, and, he, and Ray had like a vision, like if he, if he loved LL, 
and he listened to LL's music and he looked on the back of the album and it said he recorded at Chung King. Mm -hmm. That's where we wanted to record at. Okay. And we didn't even so, talk about uh, like the source. Yeah, yeah you know, saying the here source is a whole, whole other <laughs> thing too. The source started you know here. I mean? yeah. A lot of people it's, don't know that. That started here and it was yeah. one sheet. The one, piece one of paper. sheet. Mm -hmm. the, the black entertainment history in Boston is clearly there, but for some reason, I always talk about documentation being the reason why there's a disconnect yeah. between the generations. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, but like, when you are able to take that step back and look at what has happened, mm -hmm. the same way Terrell just said, we're foundational. Like me personally, to answer Chantel's question, we're foundational. I always tell artists that might come to me about what they should do. Mm -hmm. Take your time to make sure people here know you. Right. But as mm -hmm. soon as you, you know what I'm saying, have gone around the block, do what you have to do, make sure you go OT to continue to spread that That's love right. and have other people speaking for you OT, not just at home. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? When you go OT, because you did your P's and Q's here, people are going to speak for you. So somebody there is going to know somebody from Boston, and they're going right. to call your bluff. What's, and what's, when they call your bluff and figure that out. You know what's what I mean? crazy is when we got our first deal, I believe the guy's name was Kevin Maxwell, I think. He came from New York to see us because he kept hearing about how he performed. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, like you said, you got to do your footwork. You got to like if people call and say who's this, they got to you got to be verified. 100%. You can't say you this and they call like no one knows you. Hundred percent. Like back in that era, Terry was a guy. Like Terry, you know X, Y, and Z. Never heard of him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure, like you said, you got to got your groundwork covered. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure people at home know who you are. So when you get out of town, people call. Just like um, Clubhouse. I was on Clubhouse one day, a kid came on. I'm from um, Massachusetts, blah, blah, blah. Two times, you know him, I want your name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. people do that, man. I, I want to say one last thing too. I think a big mistake that the younger generation makes is not paying homage to you no, know, yeah, their elders, the pioneers, the, you know, the people who opened the doors. And not, not, not just not paying homage, but not reaching out. like. You know, I'm here to mentor people for free. You know, if anybody slides in my DM and has a question, I answer them. Terrell's here, he's, he's a major, you know, influencer and a, a resource here in Boston. Like, you have to reach out to people who have experienced this and who, you know, have the knowledge and who can guide you. Don't be afraid to reach out and talk to people. Mm -hmm. No, 100%, that's, that's probably honestly been one of my biggest, like, come up so honestly within the past seven years doing the museum is not being scared to show that love you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying um that's uh the art of the reach out is probably one of the most undervalued things I feel especially in the era of social media where it's so easy to reach out quick right. dm you know what I mean right. so um I just kind of want to wrap it up um because we are kind of running out of time in terms of my crew I appreciate y'all you know what I'm saying <laughs> but not um 100 percent <laughs> though um this was you know just the museum TV's way of saying thank you to Chantel, thank you to Terrell, thank you, um, thank you to Jeff, thank you to DJ Dex um, for honestly representing our black history and entertainment mm -hmm. in this city. For anybody to say that it's non-existent, this video, you know what I'm saying, is your proof right here. You feel me? We got My it. name is Noble. Chantel, you guys on? Yeah. We, we are play. gonna do it. We are gonna do a quick round. We are gonna do a yep. quick round. But I just want to finish up the video and then we'll, you know, what I'm saying we'll restart up. Um, but uh, once again, I am I am Noble. This is the Museum TV. We are Boston's premier vlog. Please make sure that y'all are leaving a like, leaving a comment. If there was anything that you picked up from here, if you have any questions for anyone at this table, please leave them in the, in the comment section. I'm obviously subscribed to the channel. You know we're rocking and I'm exhibiting the culture stories all year for the past seven years, moving on to number eight next year. Mm -hmm. You already know. But look, we are moving, we are growing. The city's stories are very important to kind of propel us to where we want to be and where we're gonna go. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of putting that out there right now. Look, once again, my name is Noble. This is the Museum TV. We're gonna play a quick game. We're gonna we're gonna play a, we're gonna play a quick round. We're gonna throw that into the video as well. But I definitely just wanted to sign off real quick. Okay, so this is Rhyme Antics, the hilarious rhyme and vocabulary game, the game where you gotta spit bars in proper English, okay? So two teams battle, and you, it's a, basically a rap cipher game, but you gotta spit bars in proper English, so you gotta tap into your vocabulary skills and, and rhyme, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we're just gonna like freestyle play, this will be one team, and okay. I'll, be, I'll be the, uh, the scorekeeper, right? You got your mic? 
Took that mic up, bro. Yeah, I got it. And, and, you, and, so, and so you're going to have to pass yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After okay. you say your bar, you pass it to Dex, okay? okay? All right, so the kickoff verse, you get a kickoff verse, and there's three rounds of difficulty. There's three levels of difficulty, easy, intermediate, intellectual. This is an inter intermediate level. Um, and so it says, I want the clout. We got to basically spit bars, one sentence each, last word got to rhyme with clout. And so if I were on your team, I'd kick it off and say, um, I want the clout. Yeah, that's what I'm about. Jeff? I want the clout. It ain't no doubt. Ain't no doubt. Y'all know the museum TV interviews ain't on a drought. You know what I hey, mean? Go, Dad. So that's super bad, so everybody shout. Dex, it's all you. Don't blow it, dog. I suck. I'm just a DJ. <laughs> Jeez, uh, I better say something. I'm the DJ. My favorite He's fish is trout. Uh, there we uh, go. There we go. One of my favorite artists that samples Roger Trout. Oh, Trout uh, men. Uh, Roger uh, Trout. Uh, when, uh, when I'm not when I'm not happy, I pout. Go dead. What's that all about? <laughs> you know what? I like my beer stout. I, I used to be a bank robber, but I chose a, a different route. Hey. I can't believe she said that, and ain't no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Hey. <laughs> That's too funny, That's man. That's how you play rhyme Look, man, it's, it's Thank you so much. It's that simple. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you just take, so you just get like a word, and it says, like, so this is the thing, Cloud. The kick off rhyme And word. then these are the things in the back. Okay. Those are the words on the so back. So if the somebody would have said those, those are like bonus points. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. Wow. So two teams battle, like, four rounds to determine. I, no, it's that simple. Need to go get this. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's game night us, like for real. That's game night us, for real. Hey, it's Noble, creator of the Museum TV, and I just wanted to thank you for tuning into Boston's premiere vlog. If you like this video, please leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. I'll leave a few other videos around here for you just so you can see how we're exhibiting the culture stories.